Good morning to you all. We want to thank you for today's Sunday service, and we hope you are going to enjoy as you listen to the Word of God being read and even through prayers, and um, also as you listen to the Word being shared. Let us pray. Come meet the Israelites, Father. Come meet us at our point of need. Father, we pray today as we are gathered here. Lord, you have given us different gifts in our lives. You have given us gifts so that we can use them. We thank you that, Father, there is no person who may have not given something in their lives but you have given us so that we can use them. We can use them for your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us so that we can come together and worship you. Father, we pray that may you help us through the Holy Spirit to open our minds so that we can hear the word of God clearly, speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Father, that we are here because of you. So let us listen to what God is saying to us this morning, at this moment, at this hour. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Also, I'm going to call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 13. And uh, let us listen to the Word of God. Great Sunday to you all, and it's been an amazing week. Uh, I'm sure you've all been well blessed. Um, as Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading Matthew 25, 14 to 30, and it's uh, about Jesus tells the parable of the loaned money. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went out on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought another five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathered where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow, that's an amazing verse. 
So, um, yeah, I hope you all have a good week. We'll get Johnson back up here to share his amazing message with us. Uh, come with open ears. Thank you, Johnson. Thank you, Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to share with you on the theme, the opportunity of a lifetime. The opportunity of a lifetime. We have all had what we could consider at the time an opportunity of a lifetime. Perhaps it was an investment opportunity. It was a job opportunity, a travel opportunity, an opportunity to go somewhere, meet someone, do something that you feel you would never pass you again. Well, I believe we all have literal opportunity of a lifetime. It is life itself. Life is an opportunity. Every day is the opportunity of a lifetime. Your time on earth is the opportunity of a lifetime. Every one of us in our lifetime will be given opportunities to find God's will and to do God's work. We are all given opportunities to make an eternal difference in the lives of others. In fact, from God's perspective, life is equal opportunity employment. We have been given abilities to match our opportunities so that we might exercise our responsibility to use those abilities and take advantage of those opportunities to glorify God. But here is the catch. It is the same one found in the movie. Use it or lose it. Either use it or lose it. So the Lord Jesus told a parable to illustrate the profound truth. With your time on earth, you have literalized the opportunity of a lifetime to make your life count for God's glory by using your God-given abilities for his service. So according to Jesus, life is an opportunity that carries with his responsibility to use your God-given abilities to glorify God. So in this parable, Jesus shows us how to you see life as the opportunity of a lifetime. What we have received, we have received from God. For the kingdom of God of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another one two, and to another one to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. That is what we hear from verses 45, 14 and 15. Notice that every man in his, his parable had been given gifts. One man was given five talents, the other man was given two talents, and the other one was given one. But every man had at least one talent. So everyone had been given gifts equally and they were all given by the master. Now, let me stop here and make sure you hear what Jesus is, was saying. Every one of these talents were important because they were given by the master. Every gift of God is important because it is a gift from God. Whatever gift you have is important. Why? Because it comes from God. Now what makes you and your abilities and your gifts so special is they are gifts of God. Even though everyone in the parable had been given talents, they had not all been given equal talents. Verse 15 tells us that these talents were given to each according to their ability. So God gives different gifts to different people according to different abilities. So not all people have got the same gifts. Even though the talents in the parable are monetary measurements, when you read the entire parable, you realize the talents represent opportunities to use God-given abilities for God's glory. So don't miss the fact that the amount of the talent was irrelevant. You are going to see that the master in the story expected as much from the one talent man as he did from the five talent man. But he expected no more from the five talent man than he did the one talent man. It's not how much you have that matters to God. It is what you do with what you have that matters to God. God is not concerned with whether you have great talent or a small talent. It is what you do with the talent 
that you have that matters to God, what do you do with the talent that you have? Your opportunity will never exceed your ability. And your ability will always be equal to your opportunities. But just as each man had been given ability, he had also been given the responsibility to take the opportunity to use that ability for the good of his master. And so do you. The point remember is this. All that you have, whether it is your money or the ability to work, to make the money, all of it is a gift from God. Everything that you have is a gift from God. So what we have received from God should be rendered to God. In order to understand this parable, you need to understand the symbolism. It is obvious in the story that the master represents the Lord Jesus Christ. The servants obviously represent the Christians. So the truth of the parable is this. The Lord has called every Christian to be a servant. And God has gifted every servant and given every servant the ability to use the gift for God's glory. So remember this. Every ability, at the same time, an opportunity. Every opportunity carries with it a responsibility. So that responsibility is to seize that opportunity. To use that ability and make that ability count for the glory of God. So your abilities and talents are just like money. They are to be invested. That's why the story goes on to say, Then ye who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise ye who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Every one of these servants was expected by the master to maximize the value of the gifts and the talent that had been given to them. So they needed to make some profit. I'm going to tell you something that may shock you. The Lord wants his disciples to be ambitious. Now ambition has become a dead word, but there is nothing wrong with being ambitious, if it is channeled in the right direction, with the right focus, with the right purpose. The word ambition comes from the Latin word ambition, which literally means to go around. It is true that you only go around once. It refers so to the fact that life is to be a movement around the opportunities. So God gives you in order to achieve the glory and his honor. There is a great saying I heard years ago which sums it up perfectly. We ought to expect great things from God and we ought to attempt great things for God. Let me once again tell you what success is. Success is when you simply exercise your responsibility to take advantage of every opportunity, to use whatever ability God has given you, to use it and use it for his glory and his honor. So you see, in the story of there, there are only two kinds of servants. The faithful and the unfaithful servant. To be more blunt, there are only two kinds of servants in this parable. Faithful and foolish. Likewise, you are one of those two kinds of servants in God's kingdom. Either or a faithful servant or a foolish servant. You are either doing something good for God or you are doing nothing for God. And those are the two things you qualify. That's all God calls us to do. To do our best to use whatever gifts he has given us for his glory. What we read that God will be rewarded by God because he has given us. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents. Saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents. I've done something with the talents. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you have delivered to me two talents. 
Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, hopefully, you understand what the real test of the talents was all about. It is not what gifts you are given or how many gifts you have, but what you do with the gifts you have that really count with God. That's why both the five talent men and the two talent men received exactly the same reward. It didn't matter who started with the most talents. It simply mattered what each did with the talents they had. It's not what you have. It's what you do with what you have that counts before God. What do you do with what you have? Strangely, the emphasis of this parable is not on the faithful servant, but on the unfaithful servant. The emphasis is not on the those who have done good. It's on the person who has not done anything. Notice how he responds. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. This man had buried this talent. He didn't even put it in the bank. He didn't even try to draw an interest. Now he could have. The ancient Roman Empire had a banking system that was in many respects like those banks of today. And the interest earned on deposit was about 6%. I mean, this man could have simply by going to one of the Roman banks, made 6% on his money. And he didn't do anything. You may think that's foolish, but I've got news for you. You know what I see when I look at this congregation? You know what I'm seeing when I'm preaching to those who are listening? I, I see buried talent everywhere. I see buried talent of singing. I see buried talents of teaching. I see buried talent of saving. I see buried talent of working. I see buried talent all over this building and those who are listening to my sermon right now. Now I know you may be sitting there with your pet excuse for why you don't do anything. For God, I'm too busy. Well, I do give money. Well, I do faithful attend the church service. Well, I want you to understand something. There is no excuse for not serving God. There is no excuse for that. But this Lord answered and said to him, You wicked, less servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. Gather where I have not scattered seed. Therefore you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. That is what the master answered. Now the slave tries to pass the blame off on the master. But notice what the master said. If you thought I would demand a return on what does not belong to me, do you not think I would require a return on what does belong to me? Because the money was mine. You should have deposited my money so that I can gain interest for my money. The slave was verbally hanged with his own verbal rope. Now we learn the hard way lesson of the parable. Whatever you do for God, now you reap an eternal reward later. But whatever you don't do for God now will be lost forever. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And you will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. This is a message for us today. Put simply, use it or lose it. Now this man may have been upset because he only had one talent. 
But having little to work with is no excuse for not using it at all. Someone has said, and said well, that the greater danger between the things we think are too small for us to fool with and the things that we think are too great for us to attempt is that we wind up doing absolutely nothing at all. No talent is too small. No task is too trivial. If it can be used in the kingdom of God for the glory of God, what you don't use, you will lose it. So use the talent that he has been given. Look for something that you can do with the abilities that you have been given. And that is very important for us, for you to know that God has given you something that is very important. This leads me to ask every one of you, who know or who claim to know Christ as the Lord and Savior, this question, did Jesus make a good investment when he saved you? Did you think Jesus made a good investment when he saved you? How would you feel if you went to a bank, opened a saving account, put 1,000 a year in that account for 10 years, and at the end of 10 years went to collect your money and only received 10,000? How would you feel when you asked the banker what happened? And he told you they didn't put your money in any interest-bearing account. They just simply went out behind the bank and buried it in the ground. You will believe it. But how do you think God feels when he invests gifts and abilities in you straight from his hand? And then you fail to use them for his glory. You see, as long as you live, God wants you to be faithful with what you have. And faithful where you are. That's why Jesus himself says, Ye who is faithful with little will be faithful with what which is much. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Realize everything you have is a gift from God. Think about it. It's a gift from God. Look at your hands and your feet. Imagine you have an accident today and you no longer have these hands. You no longer have this feet. Will you be able to do the job that you've been doing? So you need to thank God. Because all those things you have, they are just a gift from God. Whatever gifts you have, use them. Don't lose them. It's truly is the opportunity of a lifetime. It is an opportunity of a lifetime. And you need to use it. And use it wisely. Invest in God's bank account. Invest in God. If you invest everything in God, where your heart is, that's where you also your riches will be. If your riches are in God's hands, that way is where your heart will be. So I'm just urging you brothers and sisters to say, please, Invest in God's properties. Invest in God. And your interest is great. Everything that you have belongs to God. And you are saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have given me. May the good Lord bless you this morning as you are thinking over this message. If you put what God has given you into use, God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with all the talents that you have given us, with all the abilities that you have given us, with all the opportunities that you have sent across us. Father, we realize that sometimes we miss these opportunities. We realize that sometimes we forget to use that which you have given us for the glory of God. Help us, Father, 
as we continue to save you, that we should use all the gifts that you've given us for the glory of your kingdom. Be with us, Father. Bless every one of us who is listening to this message. Bless them, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. I would ask um, you to get your gifts, your offering, so that we can give our offerings to God and thank God for what he has given us. Remember, God has given us a lot of things in our lives and we just need to thank him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our offering before you. We just want to thank you, Father, for the love you have shown to us. We want to thank you, Father, for the gift of life itself, which is an opportunity for us to live and live it wisely. Father, we put everything in your hands. We put our lives in your hands. Bless this offering, Father. Bless those who have managed to give their offerings. Thank you, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us, wherever we are, from now and evermore. Amen.